Shelley here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. On today's video, I want to share with you how I cover the annoying hidden objects in the earlier mythographics. Um, I know the newer mythographics do not have the hidden objects, but some people have requested, um, you know, um, requested me to show how I cover the hidden objects and how I color over them because they find that they're not able to find something that works for them, that they're not able to color over whatever they've used to um, cover up the hidden objects. And so I thought I'd come on here and share that with you. I don't know how many of you are coloring in your older mythographics. I love my mythographics, even the ones with the hidden objects. Um, I find them annoying. Yes, I do not like that they're there. But the illustrations are so beautiful that these books cannot be ignored. I can't ignore them, at least. Um, and so, yeah, I thought because I've had a few requests recently about that, I'll come and show it. I'm sure there must be something on YouTube. Some people may have already done this, but I'll just show my method, um, share it with you guys and see if this is something that you can use and maybe works for you. Um, some people don't mind the hidden objects. Um, some people do mind them, but they don't cover them up. They just like to maybe, you know, use a metallic pen like they have on the cover. Like you can um, see that the hidden objects are all made gold. Um, so you could use a metallic pen if you want to just um, color in the hidden objects, find them and color them in. But I don't like the hidden objects. I think, in, at least in... Um, so some of the earlier books of Fabiana Atanasio, the hidden objects that they've added are just, just ruin the illustration. So for example, there's a calculator right there. There's a comb right there, um, a coffee cup with the writing coffee there. Those ones sort of annoy me. Joseph Kattenbangs, I don't have his first book, which is Animals. And I think in that book, there were a lot of hidden objects and um, they did not really relate to the illustration. Um, but after his first book, he did um, control um, or was allowed to or able to control the hidden objects in his colouring books. So they're not as obscure as the ones in Fabiana Atanasio's books. Um, and there were fewer in number, I think. Um, but um, I really like her illustrations. I love this book, Paradise. Um, I think Dream Garden also had the hidden objects. Um, Frozen Fantasies. These are the ones I have of hers. And then I think Is It Menagerie doesn't have the hidden objects. So um, yeah, I'll come on here. I'll share it with you. And you can see if, if you do colour in these books. If you can use some of these ideas and maybe... Um, you know, try and enjoy the colouring in these books with the million hidden objects. All right, so I've chosen this page. I'm not going to colour the page today. I'm just going to show how I hide the hidden, how I cover the hidden objects, my methods, and then um, I might show a little section of colouring just to show how the pencils work over the, um, how I've covered the, the hidden object. All right, now I have done a video um my beginner series on this page um i didn't show how i covered the hidden objects maybe i should have but i didn't because it wasn't about coloring it was just it wasn't my beginner series wasn't specific to mythographic books so i didn't show how i covered it but i did color um over the hidden objects that i had covered on this page but obviously it is a series so at least this particular video will be just for the hidden objects all right um but what i wanted to point out is even though i do hide the hidden objects um in certain areas you will still be able to see it so it's not going to be 100 percent opaque um so i use the windsor and newton white ink all right um and it's not 100 percent opaque in that you could you could add more layers to make it completely covered up but i don't do that um so in certain areas where you use light colored pencils like on the I probably don't even need to lift it up but right there there's a log you can see it because my colored pencils over that area is a very light yellow so it sort of still shows through it doesn't bother me it doesn't ruin the page for me um if it's sort of um covered up slightly so in an area like this here you can't see it as much when you go over with the darker pencils it gets covered up um I'm sure there are other areas that I can't even pick out um but the lighter areas you will notice 
you will be able to see the hidden object a bit um, through the pencil. So for example, here, you can see a little bit in the yellow area, but as you go into the blue, it's covered up a bit more. Um, so yeah, it's not 100% um, completely going to get covered. So for example, on this page, um, <laughs> I very I didn't plan this very well. I added clouds and obviously I added clouds where there was a hidden object, which was a bit silly, which meant that I wasn't going to go over with pencils in that area. So the hidden object still shows through. Now, I could have technically gone over with a few more layers of um, the ink to cover it up. But then, yes, you do get a bumpy feel um, if you add a very thick layer. So I don't like to do that. So I just do a couple of layers and that's it. Um, so the light areas, again, you can sort of see the hidden objects. But then when you come into this area where you've got all your color, I'm sure there are hidden objects around here. Like there's one here. I can just see a, a slight line there, but it gets covered up with your coloring um, pretty much. So it works and it does help just prevent your eyes from going straight to those hidden objects so even if they're just sort of peeking through in the light areas of pencil work your eyes don't get drawn to it straight away um so i like that i don't mind that yes you can see a little hint of it um you know i i don't get bogged down by that but when you look at a dis look at it from a distance your eyes won't go to it um unless you're looking for it um so yeah i just wanted to mention that that it's not going to be 100 percent uh covered up um, in some areas all right um, but yeah I, I'll try and show you what I do um, so basically like I said I use the Winsor & Newton white ink because I find that I can color over it Posca I cannot color over very well um, in larger areas sometimes it is a bit um, you know hit and miss so um, I like to use the white ink and then I use a very thin brush um, it's a zero. It's a cheap brush. I just picked it up just like that, um, but I just wanted a thin brush so it works for me. So a size zero. I'm assuming I don't know about brushes very well, but I know that was the tiniest one I could find. Um, and then what I do is when I cover up the hidden objects, obviously certain line, line art gets um, covered up as well. So for example, here the hidden object has broken that line art of Fabiana's work so I like to draw it in just to show a bit of continuation where I can now in certain illustrations the illustration is too complicated for me to add in those lines so I might not or I'll try and do it with pencils when I come to color it um, or if it's a hidden object in a very very intricate area I might just leave the hidden object there and I'll just color over it um, with the pencils but to draw in the lines I use the Sakura uh, Pigma Micron pens, okay? Um, and the reason I use this is because I use Arbrook Dura pencils, I use Tombow Dura brush pens, they're all water-based mediums, um, and so these don't smudge when you add water to them. And I need that for the pencils I use, for the markers I use. Um, so yeah, if you're gonna use any kind of water on your page, it's better to use pens that are not gonna smudge. Or even with pencils, sometimes certain pens might smudge. So um, yeah, I, I use microns and I have um, a few sizes. So the smallest one is this one for thin lines is 0 0.35 millimeters, or at least the smallest I have. It came in a set, I think. Um, I have a 0 0.45 millimeter and I have a 0 0.5 millimeter um, and I use these like I said to add the lines in so for example the line here I'm going to add in because it's a simple one just to follow and like I, like I always say I can't draw very well so if it's an intricate area, it'll be hard for me. But if it's like a simple line just to join from A to B, hopefully I can do that. But that's a thick line. So I use a thick, the thicker pen there. But then where there are thin lines, um, like uh, I thought I'd seen something. Yeah, the cloud. That's a thinner line. So you use a thinner pen. Um, so yeah, I try and just match up as close as I can with the pens I have. I haven't bought a whole selection. I don't know what other sizes they have. This just came in a pack that I had ordered ages ago. Um, and so I just try and make do with these. And um, yeah, I like to just add in those lines just to make it look complete because um, yeah, it just makes the illustration look a bit more complete with all the line art there. However, as you guys know, currently my style of coloring is such that I do use Tuliard paint pens to sometimes cover up the black lines. Um, 
but until the end of the illustration I don't know where I'm going to put those highlights with the paint pens so I do add in the lines and then sometimes I cover them up again but I can't predict until the end of my illustration where I'm going to put those paint pens or which which black lines I'm going to cover so I just draw them in all right so um I'll get started. Um, I'll do maybe just a few objects because I checked on the back of the book. On this particular illustration, there's like 15, yeah, 15 hidden objects. All right. So, yeah, there's no point of you guys seeing me cover up 15 hidden objects. So what I'll do is I'll show you a few. I'll let Then I'll do the rest off camera and I'll come back and then show you how I draw in the lines. Um, and then we can maybe i haven't yet planned this page i do want to color this page this month um or next month basically in the next couple of months i have picked this page out and hopefully i'll do it as a color along but i will show maybe if i can figure out a color of maybe like the mountains i can show how i color over the hidden object in those areas um i don't want to mess up my page i don't want to rush it um if i haven't planned I, right now when I look at the page I can't see what colors I want to do yet um for example the sky I don't think I want to do a blue sky I think I might want to do a pinky yellowy sky so I don't want to rush it but certain elements which I think 100% I will color that color like the mountain um maybe I'll color over those areas where I can just show you how the pencil works over the white ink and then um if I hopefully manage to do this as a color along, you'll see me color over the rest of the objects. Or you can obviously see the beginner series where I show how I colored over the, well, I, I show how I color this page pretty much and certain areas I have colored over the object. So you'll be able to see that. Um, but hopefully I'll do this as a color along. So you will see it, but I'll show you an example today. All right. Um, so I think... Shall I zoom in on a, an, an area so that you can just see me cover up some um, some of these hidden objects? All right, so um, I've got my ink here. Um, it's very important to give it a good shake before you get started because, um, would you say the pigment um, in the ink or whatever it's meant to be does um, settle sometimes. So just give it a good shake so it's all well mixed up. Okay, and then the other thing I do have on the side is a paper towel just to dab off sometimes if there's excess, you know, ink that you've picked up because you don't want to put, I will mention it um, in more detail, but you don't want to put thick layers. So you don't want to have too much ink on your brush. And that's the reason why I use a, such a small brush as well, because it doesn't pick up so much ink. And then I also have a bit of water um, on the side as well in case I need to wash my, you know, clean my brush off. Um, so yeah, we're just going to get started. Um, so hopefully, let me just check. Okay. Um, so I literally just use such a small brush because like I said, I just want to have a little bit of ink on the, um, on the brush. It will take a bit more time than if you were using a thicker brush, but it will also mean that you're not using a placing such a thick layer and I think that's what is important um, when you're coming to cover the the hidden objects I find I've in the past when I started doing this I did find that um, I used to put quite a thick layer um, of the ink because I wanted to try and cover up the object completely and so I, I found that I used to try and put a thicker layer and um, then it was hard sometimes to color over it. It was felt crummy and I don't like, or it felt bumpy um, and I don't like that. And that's why I use a small brush. I use literally just dip the end of the, the tip of the, the brush into the ink and I smear it on and it's, I make it flat basically. Okay. Um, so, so that you don't feel, you will feel a bit of a difference in the texture when you color over it. And you will feel like if you were to rub your hand over it, it'll feel different. But you don't want it to feel like a huge bump on the page. You know what I mean? And it can feel like that if you had a thick layer. All right. So um, very thin layers. So I've done that one hidden object um, here, the calculator, the silly calculator. Um so literally that's all I do. 
okay and you can see very little is being picked up in my on my paintbrush because it's such a small brush so it doesn't pick up so much pigment or ink um at one go and i try and limit the area that i have to cut so i don't go way over the object i just cover the object i don't like cover the areas surrounding the object too much i just try and limit it now i use my arbit draw pencils as you guys know i activate it with water over the white ink yes when you activate it with water the water it doesn't it sort of makes the pencil pigment just slide over it a little bit but then usually i color over it either while it's wet or in the mythograph obviously it's mythographics um in the mythographics i can color over wet paper with the pencils because of the paper being such good quality um or I would just use the pencils dry over top and um, it covers up. You can then color over it. So even if you've activated the pencils with water, basically what I'm trying to say, um, it might not cover that area very well when activated. So the surrounding areas so around the hidden object, you'll see that it's more opaque than on the hidden object when you've activated with water or used a water-based medium but then if you go over with like dry pencil or um yeah if you go over with dry pencil you'll see that it covers up um better and you can't see it so you can still use water-based water on the white ink not too much very sparingly but like I've mentioned before when I use my Ar Albrecht Dura pencils I use very little water to activate it because um they're such good pencils you don't need much water to activate it yeah so literally that's all i'm doing so i put a thin layer and i'm just doing a few more because i just want the first ones to dry a little bit because usually if i want to cover it up a little bit more then i go in once it's dry again with another very thin layer but you can still see the object, as you can tell, through the ink. Um, but if I was to add a few more layers or another layer, it hides up more. But um, I don't find it necessary when you're going to go over with pencils. Yeah. Um, so you don't need to waste your time going over and over unless you want a perfect piece without anything you know, showing through. But the main thing is already it's sort of... Just by reducing the blackness of that ink, um, the illustration, the line art, um, it already stops your eyes being drawn to those hidden objects, I think. You can tell me what you guys think, but yeah. And certain hidden objects, if you think it fits the theme, you can always, off the page, you can always leave them in place, color them in. Um, Yeah, so like that's a, a map and this looks like like an island and stuff, a treasure map. So you could leave that. Um, what am I going to do? Um, I think I'm, uh, I'm going to cover that one up. I don't think I want that there. Yeah, I'll just cover it up. But you can see what I mean. So a treasure map with an island sort of theme, you could you you could keep that there if you wanted to, and it would fit your illustration. So it's not it wouldn't like stand out as being something like a calculator in the middle of the sky. Um, so you can pick and choose as well. I I think I feel like covering it up, so I'm just going to cover it up. Yeah. And I go over it a few times, like basically I'm spreading the ink over so that, like I, like I said, I don't want a thick layer. So I'm just sort of using that little bit of ink I've put down there and then, then just keep on spreading it over until it's sort of a thin layer flat against the paper as much as possible. Like I said, I think that's the most important part of being able to color over it then. Um, all right, so that's dry. So basically, you've seen how I do the 
the covering up okay now i'm just going to because that's dry i'm just going to go in with another so if you want to cover it up a bit more especially in areas where you might so here i'll use darker colors so it will get covered up anyways let's say you're going to use the light colors like i showed the example in the other illustrations then you might want to get, get more of opaque results so once it's dry you can just go over again with another layer and just spread it out Try and make it as thin as possible, meaning don't keep adding the ink. Just try and use the ink that's on the paper that you've applied and try and pull it over the hidden object as much as possible so that you don't have to, um, so that it's basically still flat as much as possible. All right, so I'll just do this one. Because I think this calculator is going to show through because my sky, if I'm going to do something like a pink yellow sky, it's going to be quite light colors, which means I'm not going to be able to hide this calculator perfectly. But my eyes won't be drawn to it. Once you put all the color on that page. See, I put a bit extra there. So if I left it to dry, it would be a bump. But now I'm just sort of like pulling it over the whole hidden object. Um, oh, I lost my th train of th thought. I don't know what I was talking about. Something about the sky being pink and yellow and it'll show through a bit, but my eye won't be drawn to it. Yeah, there we go. So it looks less obvious, yeah? Um, so that's basically what I do. So I want to cover up that a bit more, see if I can pull any more rather than adding more ink at the bottom of that hidden object. See if there's any ink left, just pull it down, okay? So that's what, basically what I'm gonna do. So I put one layer, thin layer, I let it dry. I don't put too much on my, on my paintbrush. I was gonna to say toothbrush. <laughs> um, that's what comes to me naturally every day when I'm at work, but anyways, um, I, put um, a very, I just dip a tiny, my paintbrush into the ink, just the tip of it, try not to pick up too much ink, spread it over the hidden object, try and make it as flat as possible, let it dry, put another layer over the top, again, very thin, try and spread it out to flatten it out, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do to all the hidden objects and let them dry while I'm doing the ones on the bottom so then I can come back and show you how I draw in the lines. All right, I'll be right, back okay so that's all the hidden objects um sort of covered up um like i said they're not going to be fully covered but your eyes don't get drawn to them as much and once you put color over the top once you put color surrounding these hidden objects your eyes will not be drawn to them and that's my main aim when i'm when i'm trying to hide these hidden objects all right um um, but now my next thing is that I go in and draw the lines in. So um, when I'm rubbing my hands over, my fingers over these little uh, hidden objects, I can feel the texture is different in those areas, but I don't feel a bump on the page. So make sure when you're doing this, you try to avoid that bump. <clears throat> it just makes it a lot harder when you come in with the pencils. Um, that's what prevents the pencils from working over top. All right. Now I'm going to try and um, draw in some lines, not necessarily all of them, um, but um, I will try and draw in the main um, elements. For example, this this mountain here, the outline of it has been um, was covered up by the hidden object. So I'm going to try and draw in or add in that line. Um, the cloud here, I'm going to try and add it in, things like that, all right? Um, so I'll show you how I do that. I'll try and do it for all the hidden objects because, um, like I said, I'm going to hopefully, um, time permitting, try and do this page as a colour along in the next couple of months or so. Not necessarily this month, but um, when I come to do it, at least you can refer back to this video if you want to with regards to the hidden objects. Um, I'll obviously mention it in that colour along, um, but the hidden objects, how to draw in the lines. Um, so yeah, I'll do all of them on screen just in case you do want to follow the colour along later. All right. So I'm starting with, um, should I start with the thinnest? So I've, I've got the, 
uh, micron 03, which is the 0 0.35 millimeters. And I've got the thickest one I have, which is micron 08, which is the 0 0.5 millimeter. All right. So I've got these two. Hopefully they will do the job. I have the other one on the side. But um, for example, this cloud here. I am going to use the thinnest one, so the 03, micron 03, and I'm just going to try with a steady hand to add in where that line might have been. This helps because obviously it completes the line art and it also, again, tries to help um, take your eye away from that hidden object that has broken up the line art, basically. All right. Um, so here it's a bit harder. But I'm just going to sort of pretend like I know what's happening. But say this cloud, is it a cloud? Or is it um, bushes? Hmm. Maybe bushes? But anyways, try and do this, the squiggles maybe until here. Okay? Sort of looks um, equal. Then here we are missing a tree, the tree trunk. So I'm going to just try and add in the tree trunk. Um as best I can with my drawing skills and then here the line of the the outline of the mountain is covered up but it's a thick outline so to match it up as much as possible I'll just because I have a um, thick pen I will just use that see so it looks consistent um, obviously you could use the thin one and just make it like a thick line but because I have a thick pen um, I used that. Um, same thing here. I'm using the thick one, which is the Micron 08, to try and see how that would be. There we go. Okay. But then I'm going to go into my thin one, which is the Micron 03, and try and add in sort of what I think might be the line art. Mm, here, this hidden object, there is line art there, but I don't know if it's absolutely necessary to add it in. Um, because I don't know how I'm going to color this, but let me just do a couple of these so I can just do a line like that. That's it. I'm not going to add in all these hashes and things like that because I don't know where those would go. So I just keep it simple in certain areas. Um, then here with my micron, oh wait, so my thick, thick pen, just add in the lines there. And here. Okay. Here I have no idea what the line would be like. Shall we just um, follow that the one on the top? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Like, it's hard some in certain areas to figure out how you would add in the lines, especially when it's a it more intricate or detailed illustration so if that's the case in a certain area where it's too detailed for you to add line art think about whether you want to cover up the hidden object or whether you just want to leave it there and just try and color over it with the colors you color using on the particular elements that are you know you're coloring on the page the, the actual line art all right um i need my thin pen here and here and then something happens here I don't know where it goes the... just keeping it simple so I don't know whether the line art was like that there or not but there we go um, a little bit here so look I'm using the thin one but I'm just trying to make the line thicker but um, obviously, if you have a thick pen, just use that. So I've got my thick pen again. Hopefully this is useful. Um, you don't have to do this bit, but I think it just helps, again, finish off the missing line art and make it more... Um, make it less likely again for your eyes to go to those hidden objects because those breaks in the lines are now being completed and so your eyes are less likely to go to those hidden objects because right now it looks like the line the line art is incomplete and so your eyes will still get drawn to those areas more 
Um, what else? There's something here. Okay, I'm using my thin one again. Um, now this one is a bit harder, so we have a seaweed here. I don't know how how to do this. I'm just going to draw it in, but then I don't know what's happening there. But let's just do that. Okay, I'm not sure if that's right. Well, maybe I can just. There we go. Okay, <laughs> hopefully. Um, here there's a bit more stuff going on so it looks like there's a little stone here and then this something like that um luckily that is behind that fish i don't know if i'd be able to draw that okay here again this sort of the seaweed uh would this seaweed be in front let's try Just you know, doing this line out, just trying to figure it out, just makes you realize how amazing these artists are at drawing. Like it's just, it feels so hard just even sort of tracing over lines um, with a steady hand. Those of you who draw, <laughs> it's it's a, it looks like it's really hard. All right, here. We look like there's a seaweed. I don't know how to end it like that. Let's do that. Let's do that. And then there's this stone or whatever it is here. Let's try and complete that. Okay. Have I missed anything out, guys? Sometimes I, when I'm coloring, then I'll see that I've missed out drawing something in. But that's fine. You can always um, come in and do it at that point in time. So here I've forgotten this little tail um okay i think that's fine i'm not going to spend too much time trying to look for those hidden objects again and fill out any lines i might have missed out but i don't think there's anything obvious uh, I think what I've done with this clip, so I've added that a line there, but I feel like there's a part of the cliff here. Look, um, there's a line there, isn't there? So here, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just adding in my own line art now. There we go. That should look okay. Um, all right. I think that's fine. Now, when you come to color, obviously, if I've, you know, you miss anything out, you can always just use the pens and add it in at that point in time. But I think I've roughly done it. And I, hopefully it shows on camera that now when you look at the picture, yes, you might be able to see hints of those hidden objects. But by adding in those lines and completing the line art where the line art was sort of broken, um, just um, increases the idea or improves the idea of the hidden objects being going gone basically okay now what i want to do is show you how i color over the hidden objects how i color over the white ink because um like i said a few people have mentioned that they've not been able to do it successfully to the point where they can color over properly so i'm going to try and show that on this mountain here because i can't i don't know what colors i'm going to do anywhere else so i don't want to do any other area but the mountain can be sort of like I'm, I think I'm going to do like a gray or something with hints of brown so I'll quickly try and show it to you on this mountain and then like I said hopefully the plan is to try and do this sort of color along so then the rest of the page will be seen um, and if I don't I really apologize because I'm predicting that I'll get a chance to do it and I do want to do it but if I can't 
I'm sorry, but at least you'll know how to hide the objects and um, how to draw in the lines and how to color over with pencil. Okay, let's, um, let's get to it. I'm just going to zoom in. Okay, so I am, for the mountains, going to use um, a Tombow Jewel brush pen, yeah, and my pencils dry, okay? I just want to show that even the Tombow Jewel brush pens can work over the Windsor & Newton white ink. However, it's not going to be perfect over this, that surface, but it still adds a bit of colour. And then when you go in and do the detailing with your pencils, it covers up more. Hopefully it shows because it's a very light grey I've chosen. But um, there we go. So I'm using the Tombow N89, okay, just to put a base down. Um, and then when I'm colouring the rest of the page, I'll be using different techniques to colour. So you'll be able to see me use different techniques like possibly the arbitrary is activated with water over the top of the white ink um so yeah so basically all i'm doing is just putting a base down of gray hopefully this is an okay color to use um i don't want to i didn't want to waste too much time thinking about it right now um, for this particular video So now I'm going over the hidden object. So you can see that the color is sort of picking up. It's a very light color, but it picks up, but it just picks up lighter than the paper surrounding. Yeah, did you see that? So you can sort of see it, but once we go over with the pencils, it'll be fine. It's just that it glides over that surface a bit more. Yeah. Now, because the texture is different, it's a bit uh, rougher over the white ink. Obviously, if it's a large area that you're using white ink on for for maybe a different reason, like you may not be doing using the same uh, technique for covering up hidden objects, you might use it for something else on a page. Um, if it's a large area, I wouldn't use your brush pens, any kind of brush pens over it. Because it's a rough texture, you could mess up the brush pens, but because it was such a small area, it's okay. Trying to figure out, yeah, okay. You can go over that area, see? And just make darken it up a little bit if you wanted to, but I'm gonna go over with a pencil, so that's fine, okay? So that was um, the Tombow Jewel brush pen. That just creates a layer, a base layer. I just wanted to show you, I didn't need to do that, but I just wanted to show you that you can use your brush pens over it. it doesn't pick up as much color as the normal paper would, but you can still brush over it. Just like I said, you can use water over the Windsor & Newton ink. Okay, now I'm going in with a dark sepia, 175. Um, I haven't thought out how I'm coloring this yet, but I might use these ridges to create like shadows and... All right, let's start around this area. Sorry. I don't want to make it too long a video about off coloring this one mountain, um, which is why I was wondering where to sort of um, start from. But anyway, that's okay. And as I always say in these videos where I'm trying to color in real time, um, my blending is not going to be great. So sorry about that. It's just... I'm usually a slow colorist and I take my time. So when I do these real time videos, I feel a bit of pressure to be a bit quicker. So I don't bother worrying about all the shading and stuff. Um, hopefully I've chosen the right colors for the mountains. I didn't want to do them brown. Um, so hopefully gray will be okay. Okay, so uh, the one thing Obviously, if you're using water-based medium on, um, you should let it dry. Obviously, this paper is really good, but over the Windsor and Newton ink, because like I said, it sort of glides over because the texture is different. Again, you should let it dry before you color over it. So I'm just giving it a few more seconds um, just to dry so that I can color over it.
I'm not even thinking right now about my shadows and stuff. I just want to show you this technique. Okay, I am going to color over this now. So here, this is the, this was a brush, right? This is the hand, handle <laughs> of the brush I'm coloring over. You can see my pencil is going over it perfectly. You can't even see the object under this area. And then where should I put my shadow? Like, let's say we put the shadow here. So I'm covering right over. If you can see the hidden object, hopefully. Um, where is it? Here. Yeah. So you can sort of see it on the vid on the on camera. And now, as I'm coloring over it, you can't see it as much. Yes, I'm using a dark color, but that's what I meant. That in areas where you use dark colors you won't be able to see the hidden objects much and can you see that the pencil is laying down absolutely fine because i put a thin layer yes i put two layers but i made sure they were flat um brushed flat on um so i was spreading it as you saw to make sure it's flat so that it's not bumpy and you can color smoothly over it without it showing like there's a weird texture to it yeah hopefully <laughs> uh yeah all right so let me just do that top bit uh because that's where the hidden object is there's no point of me showing you the entire um mountain all right then i have what do i have i have warm gray five which is 274 i'm gonna add hints of a little bit of brown to this i think it's too gray but maybe with the colors i don't know what kind of colors i'm using on this page yet I might use turquoises for the water. It's going to be a bright page. You guys can probably predict that with me. Um, but here, here we go. I'm cover, coloring over the pet, the ink now. It feels different when I cover color over it, but it's coloring over fine, that isn't it? You can't do as many layers, okay? On the oh, actually, you can. I was going to say you can't do as many layers, but you know what? I have used Windsor & Newton White Ink for covering up hair. So in Hannah Carlson's books where, you know, she draws in the separate lines for each sort of strands of hair and things like that. Once I tried to cover that up to see if I could make more realistic hair, I wasn't very successful. But um you can do that to cover up areas in a you know on an illustration you don't want or you want to completely change the look off if you're artistic enough i'm not but with hair i have tried it and you just use the whiting over the the illustration the line art of the hair um oops my pencil i'm just going to sharpen this with the sharpener so i'm just going to pause for a second because it's an electric sharpener I'm back. Uh, what a waste of a bit of pencil. Um, that This is Warm Grey 3, 272. Um, hopefully it doesn't break again. Why do I feel like it's going to break? Um, so yeah, I used Windsor & Newton White Ink to cover up the hair line art. And then I coloured over it. And obviously with hair, as you probably know, we, you use lots of uh, layers um, over top, right? Here I'm coloring over the hidden object again. I can feel it when I'm coloring, but I can't see any difference. And I can't see the hidden object anymore, guys. Yeah. Which is awesome because we don't want those silly hidden objects, you know. Um, there we go. All right. Um, then I'm just, what should I go in with? Yeah, I'm just going to go in with my warm gray 270. Um, and then I'm going to add a bit of brown. Um, so yeah, with hair, you put so many layers and you're able, I was able to do it. So yeah, technically with ink, you can still put layers. It actually adds texture to the paper. So this is not the best coloring. I just, I'm just here to show you how I color over white ink. <laughs> all right and then look at my tiny little pencil this is a uh, nougat and i think the number is 178 if i'm not mistaken 
you can correct me, but I'm, I, I think it's 178. All right. I'm going to go over the area that we had the hidden object first. There we go. Yeah, I think that looks okay now with adding a bit of brown. Okay, can you even tell where the hidden object is in this area? I hope not. I can't. I can tell when I'm colouring over it, but I can't see it. So that's really good. So hopefully this has been helpful, guys. Um, so yeah, that's what I usually do, especially for, you know, hidden objects that are really awful um like the calculator in the middle of the sky like the brush that was here it doesn't fit with the illustration so i don't like to keep it there and yes if you color over it like say you didn't cover it you could just the same colors as i'm using now just color over the hidden objects um it, it sort of does again just stop your eyes getting drawn directly to that area but by covering it even more so, you're less like to, likely to notice those hidden objects. So I like to do it in areas that I can do it, in very detailed pages where I can't, um, you know, I'd cover up, like say here in the crystal area, say they, luckily they haven't on this illustration, but say they put a massive um, hidden object there that covered all those little crystals. Can you see? Yeah, all the little crystals and all those line arts. I wouldn't be able to draw that in. Um, so I would probably just leave it and try my best to just color whatever color I'm going to do the crystals and color over the hidden object because if it was right there in the middle, I wouldn't be able to know where to put all the uh, lines of the crystals myself. Um, obviously, if you're artistic, you might be able to. I, I wouldn't be able to. So, um, yeah. I would probably avoid hiding it in an area like that. But where most of the, luckily on this page, most of the hidden objects were in areas where there was just like a little line to sort of connect from A to B and it just, it was easy. Um, so that was good. <laughs> um, yeah, um, there we go. I think that's not too bad. I might just add a bit of dark sepia just to deepen up my shadows just because I'm at it right now. And yeah, so you can see that the hidden object is gone. Do you even remember it was there? <laughs> when I come to do, if I finish this page, when I come to do completed pages, I'm sure when I'm showing it to you on screen, I won't even remember where the hidden objects are because they're nicely covered up in some areas. But that's the main thing. Obviously, it can't be perfect. Um, depending on the colours you're using, things like that. Now, obviously, I don't own alcohol markers. The Tombow sort of works over it. I used a very light color. If I use like a darker shade uh, of gray, the rest of the area around the Windsor & Newton ink that I'd applied would be a lot darker and you'd see a more pastel toned over the Windsor & Newton ink. Um, so it still works. It does pick up the color, but not as much. Yeah, it sort of just glides. Um, so I think the hidden object was somewhere here. I can't even feel it now because of the number of layers I've put down of my pencils. It just, yeah, it just feels about the same as the rest now. That added texture has sort of become equal to the rest of the areas I'm colouring over because of so many layers. Yeah, I'm just going to darken up this area. Cool. All right. I think I can leave it at that. I just wanted to show you how the... Um, how it works, yeah, to colour over. So I'm just going to try and zoom out a bit. There we go. What do you guys think? Yeah, can't really see the um, hidden object anymore. So that's how I do it, yeah? So thin layers is the most important thing. You can put two layers if you want to. If you're going to use dark colours, you may not even need the two layers. So just... Make sure they're nice and flat. Like when I'm putting my hand over that area ever so slightly, it's slightly rougher than this part. So um, just thin layers, flatten it out on the paper as much as you can and you'll be able to colour over it. All right, guys, hopefully this was useful. I don't know if the video is out there. Um, 
that I've shared this, um, but because some people asked, um, I thought I'd share it with you guys and show you how easy it is and it will help you tackle some of these older mythographic books that you might have in your collection um, that you might be avoiding because of these silly um, hidden objects. So hopefully that helps you, um, yeah, colour in these books a bit more. All right, guys. So I'll be back with you soon. Don't expect a colour along for this um, page anytime, like, too soon. Um, hopefully, uh, it might be in the next couple of months. Um, I hope I get I get this page done for you guys. But yeah, um, as long as I'm in the mood to finish it, um, it'll be at least in the next two, three months. All right. But I'll show how I do the rest of my page on that. Um but you've sort of got a gist of how to do the hidden objects, which is the main purpose of this video. All right, guys. So I'll see you guys next time on another video. Until then, take care. Thank you for watching as always. Thank you for requesting the videos. I really do like when you guys request because if it's something I can do and I can show you, at least I know you, you'd you want to watch it. Um, so yeah, if you have any requests, let me know. All right then. Bye-bye.